we're diving back into the franchise mode of Planet Zoo. We've chosen an incredible spot in the heart of the Australian outback for our franchise. This zoo will house many, many rescued native animals and it's going to be an absolute scorcher of a series, so you're going to want to watch. And Australia has some amazing animals, so I thought why not showcase some in this series. Okay, so straight into everybody's favourite part of Planet Zoo, the pathing. So what I'm going for is a pretty much like a square path and I'm going to kind of incorporate that square path into like the entrance that I'm going to build in the next episode. But what I'm doing now is I'm just laying down all the foundations just so I've got it ready for the next episode and I can build a pretty cool entrance from there. And because we're now in franchise mode and not playing sandbox mode, we're actually going to have to take into account all the staff facilities. So I'm just going to build this long path all the way down here, just as like a starting point. This isn't going to be the final part, but we're going to put all the staff facilities here just to get the franchise started. Okay, so we're just popping in the facility, well the staff facilities that I need. So what I'm popping down here is an animal trade center, a quarantine, a small staff room and a vet surgery. Nine times out of ten, these will be good enough to get you up and running. Because I've already researched all of the items throughout the DLCs, I don't actually need the workshop or the research centre. But if it is your first time playing franchise, you will need both the workshop and the research centre because you will need vets and mechanics to actually research the stuff to unlock. It's also very important to remember as well, your first time you will need both of those because you will need to research all the different types of fencing. So obviously you need to get that going as soon as you can. Obviously the DLC items and stuff, they're not too much of a make or break, but it's entirely up to you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of decorate the area just so it fits in with the Australian theme. I'm just using a lot of the Oceania kind of trees and rocks and stuff, just popping them around, just making it feel a bit more natural to the Australia region. And also, how could I forget? The name that I've chosen for this kind of wildlife park is actually Red Spring Wildlife Park. So I had a look on Google Maps, just kind of had a look around the outback. Massive place I know. But obviously was just kind of going through and I thought there's not really anywhere, well, not, not that I could see anyway, called Red Spring. So I went with it and I wouldn't imagine there to be an outback kind of zoo. So I thought why not let's just throw both together and that's what we've come up with. And also while I've just been waffling on there, I've just added a couple of staff members to the start of the zoo. So I've added a mechanic, so he will be responsible for going around checking all the facilities. So i.e. such as power grids, all that kind of stuff, or your solar panels. We want to kind of go for like an eco vibe with this. We're going to use mainly solar panels, um, the wind turbines, all that kind of stuff. So the mechanic will look after that and the barriers because they do kind of degrade over time. Um, I've also popped a caretaker in so they will transport the animals to and from quarantine to their enclosures. Obviously we've got to have a keeper, they've got to keep all the animals safe, keep them topped up, keep them fed, watered, whatever they need to do. And we've also added a vet as well, because I believe they take them from the animal trade centre to the quarantine and I believe it's both the vet and the caretaker that take them into the enclosures. Okay, so I think it's time to actually add some animals to our wildlife park. So I've reserved this little space here. I've just added some paths either side just for optimal viewing. Obviously we've got to take into account kind of like the path flow. I don't want it to get too congested in places. So I'm making the paths quite large, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of base out a little bit of a rectangle here as I want this to be like the very vocal point. As soon as you walk through the entrance, which I'm doing in the next episode, I want there to be like a little statement in front so this is going to be like a proper iconic animal from australia leave your guesses down below and i kind of want you to walk straight in and it's straight in front of you it's going to have thick glass either side so it's got really good view in we're going to have tons of education and then there's going to be at the back almost like a off show area which people can't see and that's going to be the start of the internal staff area in the park and serve as like a central hub for all of our staff members what I would also like to do throughout the series is use as many of the scenery items from the Australian pack. That pack has some incredible pieces in it. I've used a couple in not so much series but like parks that I've done off camera which aren't going to make it to YouTube but I'm going to take obviously kind of like inspiration. It's just like a play around park. Same as what I do with Planet Coaster. I just build everything in a park, have a play around, get to grips with stuff. Put the whole pack out on the floor and just kind of piece what I want to do. 
So I'm going to be using the Australian wood for the actual offshore area. So I think it adds quite a nice texture and obviously with it coming from the Australian pack I want to keep that like theme going throughout the zoo. So I think that'd be a really cool start to be quite honest. And then for the roof I'm going with the corrugated iron. I just kind of like the effect that that uses. Um, I've used it a couple of times but not majorly so I'm going in with that I'm kind of doing an offset so you kind of have to reduce your grid size to kind of do that but then you're going to be left so what I do is I just sink it down like the very back panels just so you don't get any Z fighting because that's not very nice on the eyes when it starts flickering and going a bit weird um, so I just try and combat it as best as I can most of the time if you just advance move and sink it down very slightly it kind of stops the Z fighting sometimes you can't get away from it but you know it is what it is um, I will try my best to get as much well less said fighting as I can so yeah that's pretty much what I've done there I've just sank it down ever such a slightly touch it's not too much it's not really noticeable to be quite honest but it's there it's done what I needed to but you just have to kind of split it from the group and do it that way so let's grab our very first animal so if you've been thinking what it is it is going to be the koala so that is pretty much a statement I would imagine in any Australian zoo. They're quite common across Australia. Obviously they do need a little bit of protection sometimes because obviously people aren't overly nice to them or just kind of like wildlife changers. So I want it to be more of like a rehab centre so we kind of take in Australian wildlife and then obviously all the other animals that we're going to add later in the series are just going to be standard zoo items, uh, zoo animals sorry, and then obviously the kind of base Australian ones that you would find out in the Australian wildlife they're all going to be kind of like rescues and we brought them in and we're giving them like a better life so starting off I am just going to have one male and one female they're going to be kind of introduced together um, I'm not going to get the one with the conservation credits because I want them to come from the frontier zoo just to give it that more authentic feel that it's been rescued so they're going to be put together hopefully Wink, wink in a couple of episodes we do get some uh, koala babies I'm not sure when that will happen but watch this space and I'm sure you will see some tiny little footsteps just while I'm extending this path out I thought it'd be pretty cool for the series to be more of like a how to start and get a successful franchise because as you can see at the minute it's going pretty well the same we've only been playing a couple of minutes we're already at like nearly eight or well, nearly nineteen thousand dollars so it's all about having the right stuff from when you start to get to this point. Obviously where I'm at now, obviously talking from the future, we're pretty well off with the franchise. So we're not really struggling for money in a couple of episodes time. So I kind of want to document that and how I get to that point. because I think it'd be quite useful to share that information as well. And that perfectly brings me on to guest facilities. So what I like to do pretty early on is I like to have two of each. So I like to have two food outlets and two drink outlets. Obviously, I've just kind of gone for the basic ones. So I've gone for the water, soda, um, I believe it was the hot dog squad. And I can't remember the third one, but I always go with four. It doesn't really matter which ones. I tend to find water kind of works better and just like, I think it's pipe shot or pip shot or gulpy, something like that. Um, always make sure you've got like backup vendors as well because obviously they take breaks so I tend to hire just another three vendors on top of that they will kind of roam around but it's good obviously like future plan in the zoo because obviously when they take breaks if you've got nobody lined up they will just close it and you'll start losing out on money okay so now we've got the shops and the guest facilities set up in that area we're going to head over to the koala exhibit and I'm just going to add all of their enrichment because obviously now we are in franchise mode enrichment is very important so you need to hit their targets which can be displayed on the animal profile so you just load up the animal profile click on the animal do whichever and then there'll be a tab where you can actually see which enrichments that you need they have to hit a certain number so like the eucalyptus tree which we're using here that will tick off so much and then if you add two it doesn't really add any more you have to kind of mix and match them so for now I'm just going to add two eucalyptus trees and a water pipe and then I'm going to kind of theme it with just the Oceania trees and shrubbery and stuff like that. And then it seems right that we've got to pick an Australian plant. So we're going with the Australian fan palm and then what I'm doing is I'm just taking one and then I'm turning on random rotation and I'm using another one just to sink it down below that plant just to give it that fuller effect. 
you can pretty much do this with any tree in game it just makes it look a little bit more filled out because i think some of the plants without mixing them together they do look a little bit leggy i believe the word is where it's just leg and then leaf so i don't want that i want some leaves lower down the plant so that's why i've done it that way and i do do this with quite a lot of different plants throughout the game so you'll probably see that quite a lot throughout this series and then here as well i am just using a couple of trees that the koalas will actually be able to climb Obviously they'll be able to climb the eucalyptus tree feeder but I want some more variety in there so we're going to choose some different trees. I've popped that one in between the two because they can climb quite a lot of different trees. So yeah the climbable trees are pretty cool. You can also filter in the menu as well if you do type in climbable it will display all of the trees that any well I say any animal an animal will be able to climb so that's always a good tip to have as well. These ghost gum trees as well are really really cool they just give me pure Australia vibes they fit in really nice with the surroundings so I think these are going to be quite a staple in this series because I do like them they've got different ones you can get a sapling and then they've got two other sizes so you can just kind of mix and match throughout the zoo but these will definitely 100% make a lovely appearance in almost every enclosure I think they're pretty cool I mean if you google Australia I'm pretty sure you'll probably see these trees everywhere because they're just giving that outback vibe so that's what we're looking to achieve we need to keep it as authentic as possible so always keeping that filter on as much as I can just to give it that realistic look okay so what I've done here is I've just started a staff path so this is going to be where the staff's kind of like central hub is going to be this is going to be the place where we've got like the water treatments, the solar panels, the keeper huts. So before we hop into that, I'm just going to hop straight back to the enclosure. I am going to pop this bit into speed build after I've done the education. So obviously in franchise mode, education is extremely important because the more educated your guests are, the more they will spend in your park. So what I like to do is have as much coverage as possible. So here I'm putting an education board on each corner and then underneath that board, what I will do is I will pop a speaker. And with the speakers you need to be very careful because they can't overlap so you can use the range just to kind of move it up and down I tend to keep mine as close as I can so as long as they don't overlap on the path where the guests are it will be completely fine so if they overlap in the enclosure that's fine you don't need to worry it's just where the staff walk so obviously making sure you've got them both synced together so you need to make sure you've got your animal in the enclosure on that education board and on the speaker as well and I know I have placed down one of the guest talk points but I'm going to come back to that in a later episode because I want to just kind of flush through and go through every enclosure and add it. Um, it's easier to do it towards when you've got more animals because you set like a sequence. So I don't want the sequence to be kind of off because it always sets it to march for some reason. So ignore that same guest speaker point for the minute. We are going to come back to that and we're going to do more of an in-depth thing just on how to set them up and just make sure you've got got it all running smoothly because you need to make sure you've got enough educators and i want the educators to be as knowledgeable as possible so they need a lot of training so we'll go over that more in depth in possibly the sixth or seventh episode when we've got a more established zoo and then franchise mode as well another very very important thing this is something you cannot miss when playing you do need to be adding donation bins to every single enclosure you do because the more donation bins you have and the better education you have the more guests will donate to that animal so as you can see here I just pop them next to all the education points you can pop them anywhere you want but I've always found they work a lot better next to the actual education boards or where the educator is so I'm guessing there's some logic to that I don't know the, the ins and outs of it unfortunately but it seems logical that you would have one next to an education board so now that the koalas have arrived in their enclosure i'm just going to assign the koala to the education boards that i've put down and also the speakers and then after that i'm just going to grab one of the koalas because i just need to check obviously i know we've got climbing objects in here so i want to just make sure they can't escape from anywhere i don't think they can because it's thick glass so we're just going to click on that and then we're all good to go so, and now that we've welcomed our first two animals you can see now that we are starting to have guests arrive so this is where we actually start making money so i'm just going to change the ticket prices to four pounds each um, i know when i've seen other people do this they kind of do the adult price at like 10 pound or something and the child at five but there's no actual bearing they'll pay whatever to get in so i always just leave them both the same 
And then what we'll do is we will just increase it gradually. You normally get a prompt to say like guests think the tickets are underpriced, but I tend to ignore that. I just kind of go off my own judgment and all will be well. So what I'm doing in the background here is I'm just adding a tiny little pond just before we hop into the section where I'm just going to start off the staff facilities. So when I selected the water then, you can see the, the water cleanliness is about halfway. So that's not good because if we leave that as it is, it will just keep degrading and the water will get dirtier. And if we leave it, the koalas will get sick. So I'm going to add a water treatment piece behind here just to keep that water as clean as possible. Okay, so I'm just gonna find a position where I prefer it. So obviously I'm just gonna try out a couple of different ones. The one next to the door was a little bit too close. So I settled for here because I think it's quite nice. And then I can pop a solar panel next to that shortly. So it's always good to ensure it's powered. Obviously, as you can see at the minute, it isn't powered. So we do need to add a solar panel next to it. So we're gonna go for that eco kind of style um, over the zoo. But just before we do that, I'm just gonna hop back over here because as you can see, our koala exhibit is getting pretty popular. So we've got a couple of crowds now, which is really, really positive. So these crowds will obviously be picking up education from that board. These ones at the glass here are looking at one in the tree, which is pretty cool. So this is what I was trying to explain earlier. So with the in-game trees, the animals can actually climb and they do have climbing animations. So as you can see, he's kind of perched there as you would see a koala in the, in the wild. So I'm just gonna pop the in-game light on just so you can see him a little bit better. And typical, as soon as we get there, he's had enough and he's going. So that's just typical, isn't it? So they're all stood there watching, which is pretty cool. Um, I could probably do with adding a education board there, to be quite honest. I can do that at some point, but I think at the minute we've got plenty of education. We're just gonna kind of roll with it. I know the cash is a little bit low at the minute, but I'm hoping now we've got guests, they're gonna start purchasing stuff. They're gonna start donating, which is pretty cool. It's also wise as well to have ATMs around, and I like to add like a 50p charge onto ATMs but at the minute I don't particularly need them. Okay, so heading back over to behind the koalas. So just using the heat map, you can see there's a couple of like negative impacts on the gas, but luckily the path ends away from the barrier, if that makes sense, away from the radius, sorry. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna add the solar panel in. Because like I say, we're going for that sustainability, that kind of eco, Kind of credentials for the park which i think are pretty cool so i'm just going to get this all joined up as neatly as i can obviously the puffin in this game isn't my absolute favorite but we're going to go with it and hope all is well okay and then just to make this area kind of fit in because the whole area is going to be kind of cohesive i'm going to filter down on the australian pack so i'm going to be using the same little wood pieces that we've used for the offshow area so I'm going to be using the two meter Australian wood and then I'm just going to kind of section these bits off just so it looks like it's neat, like kind of neatly put away into the building. Obviously this is just the start. We're going to kind of expand on that. We're going to make it fit in with, with the keeper hut that's going to go at the side there. So obviously just keeping that theme, I think obviously this wood is really nice. It blends in really nice to the surroundings as well. And then here, as you can see as well, the guest facilities are getting really busy. So that's why our little arrow on the money sign is starting to go up. So that shows that we are starting to make a profit, which is good. You can, if you really, really want to go in and up the prices. So just before I go over that, as you can see here, I'm just going through the speakers. So as you can see in the middle there, there's a tiny little overlap, but that's not too bad because it is off the path. So the speaker setup that I've got at the minute is completely fine. The blue ring will kind of pick up that whole area so anybody that enters will get educated with information about the koala. So that's vital to obviously what we're trying to achieve here. We want people to be coming out of the zoo as educated as possible and then they're going to spend more money. And then further down the line we can hire educators and they will just kind of walk around, they can do talks, they'll talk to guests, get them more educated. So just gonna check up on the koalas. As I can see, their welfare isn't the greatest. So I'm gonna check that out and see what is causing that. 
I would imagine it's possibly their climbing because they haven't got too much. So I'm just going to hop into their profile. You can check all of their stats here. So you can see here the welfare is currently at 41, which isn't amazing. It is the space that is a problem. So you can either, if it's ground space, it will tell you, but if it's climbing space, then it will also say, because there's a couple of different options for certain animals. So for example, if you take like a sea lion or something, they don't have much requirement for ground space but they require like a depth requirement and a water requirement if I'm not mistake mistaken so it's same for every animal the koalas as well so as you can see here their ground space is okay because that's in the green but their climbing requirement is in the red so that indicates we need to add some more trees so obviously again we need climbable trees and we can add like a, a climbing structure or something which we can use with the enrichment items in game so in these situations I tend to like to use the wooden the climbable logs because I think they're pretty cool you can build some pretty cool stuff I built some pretty cool like chimpanzee climbing frames and orangutan stuff with these and obviously if you're just kind of snapping it all together it's really really easy to do these you just kind of snap them together do what you need to and then you can pretty much just duplicate the frame if you wanted to it just makes life easier if you do it that way and also as well, if anyone has just started out playing franchise mode, um, whether you're on console or PC, whether you've just got the game, because I know there's a sale on at the minute, um, I also have Instant Gaming Link as well, so if you always want the DLCs and the Planet Zoo base game as well, you can get that at quite a discounted rate through my Instant Gaming Link. I will pop all the links down below, but yep, if you wanted to check that out, I've had a couple of people purchase DLCs and stuff which is pretty cool so thanks to you guys that have actually picked those up but they're usually pretty cheap to be fair I think most of the time they're about half price or less I know some of the newer ones like the zookeeper pack is probably like 25 percent I imagine it will go down at some point point. Um, also as well let me know if you have picked up the zookeeper animal pack let me know what it's like I've not actually had time to play around with it just yet and um, I will be including them in this series because I think some of the animals can work, some of them can't, so we're going to leave them out. We're just going to use the ones that we can make work in an Australian zoo. Because obviously once the Australian rescue animals as such have been sorted, we're going to go full pelt into life of the zoo. So we're going to be adding like all your traditional like elephants, we're going to add some pretty cool stuff. Obviously when I get to that point I'm going to start asking for like suggestions and stuff, just what you want to see in this zoo. I'd like it to feel more of like a collaboration kind of thing with you guys. I think it'd be pretty cool for you to have some kind of input and say, do you know what, this would be really cool. Can you do this next episode? You know, pop it down below. And, you know, I always read comments, you know, I don't bite. I'm a nice person. So if you've got any burning questions or anything, always pop them down below. If you don't want to drop a comment, I don't know, message me on Twitter or something. I'm trying to get my Twitter a little bit more grown because it's at like 10 followers so <laughs> it's not <laughs> but it's grim but yeah we're trying to build it we're trying to build youtube as well we're only at like 207 at the minute so i'm hoping to build that i guess it just trickles in as it goes but if you're not subscribed this is a good time to kind of shout myself out so you know subscribe why not it's free or even better if you hit that subscribe button I guarantee you, your next animal in franchise mode will have the best stats ever. As you can tell, I'm an amazing liar. Okay, and now that I've been waffling on for the past minute or so, we're actually going to get back to the franchise stuff. So, I've just filtered down on the Australian pack, because I want to be using these Australian bins. They're pretty cool, they've got a really cool design on them. I know, pretty weird for a bin, but they're cool so we're going to use them and then we're also going to add these really cool benches they kind of follow that same design so we're going to pop them around obviously i don't want to have too many because i don't want it to clutter up the path i've noticed once before that the path goes a little bit weird when you have too many benches and too many bins people kind of just stand in one spot and everyone else just joins them and then you have to move one person or delete the path and they like explode i don't know why it does that i've not actually seen it for a while so I'm hoping it doesn't happen again, but it's a pretty cool shot of the koala. Sorry, I'm so distracted, honestly. I start talking about one thing and then I see a koala and I'm like, wow, koala. But yeah, it's pretty cool. 
That one's called Ellie. We'll also need two names for these as well, because I don't really think Ellie's a good name for a koala. No offense if you're called Ellie. It's a lovely name for a human, but I don't know about a koala. It's a little bit weird. I don't think I'd call a koala Ellie. So yeah, two name suggestions. I'll pick out the best ones. I'll feature them in the next video. I'll just make like a little segment. I'll just say we've given such and such a name. Um, but yeah, I think the bins are going to be vital because I just saw quite a lot of litter on the floor and <laughs> as you can see the guests aren't overly happy about seeing that. So I either need to chain, train sorry, the janitor, caretaker, whatever they're called in game and either get more bins or hire another one. So you can either train them or you can hire another, it's entirely up to you. The more cost effective one would be to train them up because I think it's like $150 to train them. And they just get a bit more efficient at the job. They all start off on like one star. So it's best just to do that. So I'm just going to claim that reward there because that gives us a little bit of extra money. And I have completely forgotten about the key port. So that is a massive schoolboy error. So that's something you need from pretty much the start. Because with no key port, the keepers can't prepare food or anything. So these poor little guys are going to go hungry if we don't add a keeper hut. So what I'll do is I will just add that off camera. It's going to be the same style and it's just going to kind of fit in with where the water treatment was and the solar panels. It's going to be the same style as the off show area. And then I'm going to leave this one here. I'm going to leave you with some lovely cinematics of them playing around and swimming. I think that's pretty cool. So if you have enjoyed this one, subscribe, like, comments are always appreciated. We need two names. Always drop suggestions down below. Obviously, we're working our way through the Australian animals, so once I've got through the Australians, I will make a little list of suggestions you want to see. You know, let me know if you've enjoyed this style. I've done it a little bit different, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I've not done it as like a live recording. I've kind of pre-recorded and kind of set out more of a little bit of a script, just because I think it's easier for me, because I, I waffle a lot. If you've been watching my videos, you know I waffle. I just go off on the right tangent so <laughs> we're trying to stick to the path we fell off a couple of times but we're not not going too far off the path like i just did then but yeah i'll leave you on that one and if you have enjoyed let me know down below and i will catch you in the next one This one is a lot of